back at it again, YouTube. One of our recent videos. Recent. It was called Stop Listening. Listen. Paying attention. All the attention. <laughs> In that segment, James spoke about traumas. Now, he told me that he wanted to elaborate a little bit more on this. So, why not? We started today, let's finish it. All right? We can try it. Let's do it. Traumas. All right, y'all. Peace out. <laughs> Traumas. I did want to spend a little extra time on this because I feel uh, certain things do need to be put into context as well, need to be understood all the way through. Last time you heard me say, traumas give you a reason, but not an excuse. I'm gonna leave him anonymous at the time, but one of the things that he said in one of his segments is, men with traumas are making excuses. And I wanted to challenge that particular thinking because that is pushing on a false narrative onto someone else what he should have said is traumas give you a reason but not an excuse and I, I would like to stand and just go further on that now as we are children and we grow up we learn everything from our parents and the environment that we live in some individuals environments are a lot more stressful than others for example some people grow up in poverty. By poverty, they have been homeless before. Um, some individuals in more serious, case, serious cases has been abused, whether physically, mentally, or sexually. Um, some, In some cases, some individuals were actually pampered all their life, and they really didn't have to do much. Now, that last one, I'm pretty sure how you guys might ask, how is that a trauma if somebody was provided everything? Because they know very little. You get into a relationship with an individual who might be a lot more financially set up in life, but does not know how to connect with you emotionally. Does not know how to speak to you in a way where your brain and your heart opens to want to be a better version of who you are because they weren't exposed to it. Usually individuals who's in that lifestyle, they have everything given to them. Then they're also kind of uh, shaded and shadowed from more severe things. As a parent, I know that might be a little bit difficult for you to hear, because as a parent, you do want to protect your child. You do want to make sure that you cover them from a lot of things. The best way you can cover your child is by being honest enough. Whatever you decide to hide from them now, and they discover later, can actually affect them three times as hard. Another example, going back to the scenario with the individual who had things handed to him. How often did they have to cook for themselves? Now and later in life, they may not know or have the passion to want to do the simple things, i.e. cook. And what makes it funny, they'll be the great order taker in the world. Like, let me get this door dash up real quick. I know how to hit this number real fast, you know. Instead of taking the time and actually putting some sweat and effort into making mistakes over a meal and then like developing that. The reason why I say make mistakes even me being a chef in my beginning stages, I under season stuff, I undercook stuff. And then I just completely burnt the sugar honey out of the out of some thing. <laughs> Especially on the first time that I was frying something like, mm -hmm. brother, listen, right. you first time you learn about salmonella, you just leave the chicken in there for like 45 minutes. Like I think it's done. <laughs> Turns out to the same color as the shirt, but it's okay. No, it's okay, but uh, traumas are something that's very, very serious. I mean, very, very serious. And they need to be taken case by case scenario. You're not built for everyone's trauma. And try your best not to feel as if you have to be their superhero. Because you will be another person who adds on to it. Your objective should be to at least be honest with them, like I said, their parents should be. Be honest with them without being destructive. Be honest with them out of love because you want to see them grow, because you want to see them better. I'll give you another example. Um, 
In some cases, individuals who were sexually assaulted as a child, they turn out to have a very, very heavy lust for sex later on in life. That's what they feel is needed in order to counteract that. That is something that's very heavy because that's something that leads to adultery. That's something that leads to a lot of cheating and things like it. It leads to a lot of pornography, masturbation. That's something that's very, very heavy. So I was asked before the person who struggles with that, how do you help them? First and foremost, there are many programs you can help them out with or try to bring a level of relativity. Let them know that you struggle as well. It may not have to be in the same area, but when people are dealing with trauma, sometimes all you need to hear is someone is struggling as well. Sometimes your situation may be actually be worse than theirs. And that can actually start a small seed of change. It didn't come from you, it came from you being honest. I call that planting the seed. Honesty is planting a seed and then you just let God kind of flourish all the way through. Honesty is planting that seed like, hey, I understand that you struggle with this. In my life, these are the things that happen to me. And like I said, in some cases, when we hear another person's trauma, as, as humans, we instantly like judge it. I don't know why, but we just like to act. I don't know why I'm complaining when this person has been homeless before, or been beat up or been put out, or mom was on some sort of drugs. Like, you know, you hear that and you just like, I need to correct something in me. You know, that kind of shakes you. Like this person, I'm pretty sure this person struggles, but every time I interact with them, they just got it put together. And I'm only thinking about this part all the time. How do they do that? And then that starts up a conversation of questions of like how and why, and now you can suggest things. Like we have to understand as humans that we can't tell anyone to do anything. We can suggest it. And then we have to live with whatever they decide to do with. You are not their savior. That's how you can add on to someone's trauma if you try to turn into their God. When you make it a priority that you want to see them be better, and you don't allow God to work through you for them when you make it about you. It can be where you have a long friend all your particular life and that friend always gets into some sort of trouble. If that friend always can call you, know that you are now a trigger and a trauma for them. Know that you have actually added and not taken away. And that actually adds on to the stress of you as well. And you need to be careful because not everybody is built to handle other people's traumas. And we have to be careful on that one. The best way to help a person out is to suggest certain programs and just to be honest with them 100%. Be honest out of love and not out of maliciousness. Don't use it as a crutch to have a leg up on them, but use it to pour into them with so much love that they want to fight for themselves. The first, As soon as you decide to use it as a, as a crutch, and it could be something that's like, the, going back to the sexual thing, you catch and watch pornography and the first thing you do is get angry and all this other stuff. You can actually have a person fall back and revert from wanting to open up to you because they've seen how you respond when they're at their weakest moment. Traumas are very, very deep for the individuals who are in relationships and you do plan on becoming a husband and wife later on in there. Take the opportunity and talk about it and really dig into it so the both of you are actually set up to handle one another. That also gives you a deeper understanding on if I can, if this, if I actually can be a faithful husband and a faithful wife to this individual, I'm not talking about cheating, but I'm just saying mentally be committed in that relationship, spiritually be committed in that relationship, physically. I'm not saying about sex, about uh, sex when it comes to, am I, can I be faithful? Being faithful is like, I understand your problems and I want to be faithful to God by allowing him to help me with you. Like that is a completely different ball game. I feel these are conversations that we always should have with one another just so that conversation just stays open. Yeah, I mean, it's what if uh, pride gets in the way and they want to just shield themselves from being exposed? How would you go about counseling someone like that? When it comes to pride, the best way to battle pride is through prayer. So even if a person is uh, intimidated by exposing themselves to you, but if they're open to prayer... In that prayer, expose yourself to God in front of them. And allow that to be, once again, that's the truth. Let that be the seed for God to open them up. Pride is a 
It is a barrier that we put around ourselves because we don't want to see little. We don't want to seem weak. That's more in men than it is in women. Um, women don't, I mean, some women nowadays do get that mindset where they don't want to seem weak and or vulnerable, but that's all that is is pride. And that is like a blanket around us, but you can battle that through prayer. And the reason why I say that very easily is if you expose yourself to somebody, that literally helps break down one wall of pride. And that's like the steps to healing. 100%. No, it, it, that, that's 100% the steps to healing because it's it's so important to expose yourself. Like, I'm very easy with exposing myself now because I don't want to say like this, but I don't care. Yeah. Specifically because we're going to be stripped naked and exposed to God. Like, he knows everything. Yeah. And if he's the only individual who has control over my life or, or death, which is heaven or hell, why do I really care so much about somebody looking down or bad at me if I expose who I am as a person? So transparency is equivalent to freedom, you say? Yes! Listen, you smacked it like right on the McNugget. Like this? If you hit me, you're gonna die. (laughs) Come on, all right, all right, all right. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Like transparency is like the key to freedom and you shouldn't have to live in worry because of what someone may or may not have over you. Just be honest about it. Just be open. Besides, the more and more you hide things, the harder it is for you to do it. Like it just, you can feel that pressure. You feel that weight because now you have to live in this bubble of perfection all your life, which means you live in the opinions of others. That's, that's a prison on its own to live in the opinions of someone else. That's a prison of its own and it's dangerous. But I did just want to get a little bit further into the traumas. I want to encourage you guys as, as girlfriend, boyfriends, husbands, and wives, take the opportunity and really, really dig into one another and love on one another unconditionally. That means there's nothing in your way that will stop you from loving that individual. Pray in the open with exposure. Transparency is life-changing because you do not seek the approval of one another. You only seek the approval of the Father. When you live in that lifestyle, you live very, very clean because you know what his approval rate is. You know what he looks in for you, so you're only going to do it for his glory. But I did want to dig into it. Traumas are something that's a big deal. Let's start having those conversations so we can have more healthier relationships, so we can have more healthy dialogue with one another. Learn how to love on somebody by letting God love, show his love through you. Love y'all again. I appreciate y'all. Let's start talking about this and let's actually get to better relationship statues. Peace out.